This week on FX Guide TV. With Avatar now on DVD and Blu-ray, we look at how Weta Digital used Nuke to bring Pandora to life. And then we catch up with the father of Steadicam and check out his latest invention. This and more coming up next. Hello, I'm Angie and welcome to FX Guide TV. Now with the DVD and Blu-ray out this week, we start the show with Robin Hollander from Weta Digital, who took us through some of the issues involved with cleaning up stereoscopic footage from the blockbuster Avatar. We didn't have all that many plate shots uh, compared to a traditional show that we do. Uh, out of the 1,800 shots, we probably had a, sort of between 100 and 150 hero plate shots. We had quite a few assets as well, little green screen elements that we tracked in. One of these shots uh, from the Courage Fire sequence uh, was one of the plate heaviest sequences in the movie that we had. Uh, we had a lot of green screen sc uh, scans of him in his amp suit. We had a lot of close ups. Um, we also replaced a little his head up display and stuff like that. But this really showed the new set of challenges that working with stereo will bring. I can show you exactly what that is. If you look at the left and the right eye, there's just so much discrepancy between the two in terms of grade, exposure, and, and also mainly vertical alignment. So if I just zoom in a little bit here, you can see this area back here is fairly cool and sort of greyish in the left eye. The right eye has got a real magenta cast to it. Where that came from, no one knows. Same with all of his skin tones, it's just something in between the two cameras, you know, the, the setup that they had, uh, shooting through a mirror, it's just going to degrade the image a little bit, so it was always really hard to get a, a perfect match. Uh, so we really used Ocular to create those two tools, uh, those two eyes, sorry. Now, we also have this vertical misalignment between the two plates. If you look at this edge here and just see how incredible amount that's travelling up and down, when in fact it should be locked vertically. Uh, that was again one of the features from Ocular that really, really helped us out to fix. If I show this in anaglyph mode, you can really see how badly off this is. Uh, tip of his knife, for instance, not so bad. Back here, really, really, really bad. So the way we went around this was using uh, Ocular Solver Tool. What the Solver Tool does, it basically tracks features between the left eye and the right eye and basically shows us the discrepancy right between them. Uh, you've got total control of a number of features, just as in a tracker note, for instance, you can set thresholds and all sorts of stuff. You can also analyze either every frame or interplay keyframes. Now, we found that quite often it was just the first, or you know, the, 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 the offset was constant, so we just interpolate on one keyframe or maybe have two, first frame and last frame. But really, the offset didn't travel all that much in between. If you do look at the feature matches, you can really again see just the distance that the left eye and the right eye is off. So this tracking mark is over here in the other eye and it's just not helping the shot. Uh, this solver data then got fed into the disparity generator, which as it aptly named it, generates disparity. Um, if I look at this in the disparity channel, it's processing away. So you can see it looks like a real nice colorful painting. You could probably pay millions and print it out. But if you look at the actual color values at the bottom of the screen, it's really but pixel by pixel just giving us the disparity data between the two eyes. If I switch back to RGB mode, uh, this disparity data was then fed into the new view node. And what this does, it lets us create an input, both or left or right, and we can interpolate the position. So if we take the left input, we can interpolate it to the position of the right eye, and vice versa. Uh, at better, we only ever touched and graded and vertically aligned the right eye because we obviously wanted to have the left eye as clean as possible for the mono release, which you know will be a big part of this movie as well. So if I show you this, this is using the left eye as an input and it's interpolating it towards the right eye. So if I put this back to zero, you've got your original right eye, uh, left eye, sorry. If you go into the middle, sort of halfway in between, if you go all the way to the right, it warps it based on the disparity map that we created over to the right eye. So if you look at this newly created right eye, and compare it to the original right eye, you can see it did a really, really good job at actually morphing the whole image. Uh, obviously, you will get artifacts because it is trying to recreate pixels that it just couldn't see in the original uh, left eye. So obviously, we have a bit of an artifact up here, for instance, that will bring in a bit of a highlight. We have big artifacts here. But just in terms of grading, and that's all that we use this technique for, you can really see that you know this is going to give us the color balance that we're after. 
Now, Ocular has got some great color matcher tools which probably work on the same kind of principle. Uh, we did prefer working this way because it gave us a real nice visual way of where it went wrong and we could fix it so we could rotate areas out and be really selective how we wanted to treat it. Now, to make our life a little bit easier and get rid of some of those artifacts, we blurred the two images. So instantly you can see the artifacts are you know, not as obvious anymore. Some of them are, especially because of the blurring, they will be more apparent. But we then just took this mat, divided the two together, and it gave us a real fast way of seeing the actual color tonality, uh, the difference in the color tonality, and you know, the areas that were really working and weren't working. We then took this the divide between the two, took our original right eye, and multiplied it by the divide, there we have your graded right eye. So you can see it will introduce a few small artifacts, but because we've got that visual interpretation in the divide, we can just go in and rotate it out or have a bit more blur up here or less blur, really selective like that. So if you look at this, as you can see, the, the color tone between the two is really working well now. You know, it's, it's pretty spot on. There's maybe a few more issues with lifted blacks and stuff like that. These plates would still go through a post grade. So more often than not, you know, that would be bang on the money for us. Now obviously the bigger problem was the vertical misalignment. So again, if you look at this frame down here, you can really see it's off. It's, it's not gonna look very nice in 3D. In fact, it's probably gonna give you a headache or a nose bleed. Um, using the same solver data that we have further upstream, we can use what's called the vertical aligner. Now what this will do is, based on a different alignment method, it will actually just warp or distort or scale and rotate the image to try and match the disparity between the two. Uh, there's a few different options. You've got vertical skew, warp, rotation, scale. We found that scale and rotate gave us the best result because it mimicked the real life camera a bit better. So you know, you're pulling back a bit, you're scaling and rotating. So if I turn this on, you will instantly see how much better this is. So you can just see it's, everything's lining up so much better. You know, it's really doing a good job at it. Um, in certain shots, such as this one, it's just not quite good enough yet. So what we do is run a second vertical aligner. This one's set to either skew or warp and run this over it as well. So instantly you can see around the area here, the knife, it's, you know, it's really just tying it all together. Back here as well, you know, these tracking markers back here suddenly just align so much better. Um, so if you look at the final result for that, left, right, and right, eye, uh, left eye and right eye, you can see it's really working well. You know, the, there's no offset between the two. The grade is pretty much bang on. And if I just go back to the original to show you again how bad it was, you know, it's a big color shift. It's jumping up and down like a baby in a high chair. It's not really what you want. So this process was done in all plate-based shots, which there were quite a few in the end sequence. Uh, what we traditionally do is we would track the original plates with the vertical offset in it, render all our CG to that, and then at the end of the comp, as a final step, vertically align everything. Uh, this just meant it sped up the whole camera pipeline immensely, because otherwise you would have to pre-comp scripts. You know, maybe someone didn't do it as, as clean as they could, and, and we misaligned it a little bit. Who knows? So that way, we just we could have it as a post process. It was really fast and easy to do, and produced great results in all our plate-based shots.